Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Welcome to Double Portion Inheritance Ministries. I'm Maria Marola Wold. And I'm Gary Wold. In accordance with 1 Corinthians 9, 7 through 14, after the Sabbath is over, we ask you to prayerfully consider a one-time or recurring donation to www.paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash DPI ministries or www.venmo.com at Maria dash Marola. You can also use the email address double portion inheritance at gmail.com. Okay, everybody. Today is March 16th, 2024, and we're going to be talking about 20 biblical proofs that Trump is the little horn and not Obama. Now, before I start, I want to say that I did not come to this uh, decision or this realization easily. It was, um, you know, I tried to give Trump the benefit of the doubt. In fact, um, we didn't really like him when he was campaigning in 2015. We didn't like his attitude. But when it looked like it was either him or Hillary, of course, we did the typical thing, which is to choose the lesser of the two evils. But now we know better because, you know, I mean, I've known for years about the Hegelian dialectic that both sides, Democrat and Republicans, doesn't matter. Either candidate is owned by the Rockefellers and the Rothschild bankers, that the bankers select the presidents. We don't our vote doesn't count it. They give us the illusion that our vote counts so that to keep the people placated so that they will not revolt. But in reality, it's the global elite bankers that choose the presidents. And they're all related. They're all genetically related. All the men who've been presidents of the United States are genetically related to one guy named Charlemagne, who was the king of the Holy Roman Empire in the year 800. He became the Pope of the Holy Roman Empire in the year 800. Some of the uh, presidents have been related to uh, the kings of England, like like King Edward. But they're all related. They all come from what they call, you know, royal bloodlines. Okay, it's all about the royal bloodlines when it comes to the Illuminati. So they don't just, no ordinary Joe off the street gets to become the president. You have to belong to these royal, so-called royal bloodlines, okay? Um, so, and I've known this since right after the events of 9-11. But somewhere along the way, I got convinced again, and Gary and I did vote for Trump the first time in 2016. And I only say this because, I mean, we've repented since then. We don't believe in voting anymore, okay? Because in the summer of 2020... Um, during the pandemic or scamdemic or whatever, I remember I the the Ruach Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit, said to me one day, Maria, look up the word vote, and I was like, okay. So I go look it up, and lo and behold, look what it says. Um, it means it's from Latin votum, a solemn promise to vow. Okay. Um, to declare oneself uh, as being in something in favor of something. Um, let's see. There's another one I want to look at here. Vote. Yeah, here it is. Merriam-Webster, to take a vow. Okay, to take a solemn vow. Um, here it is. Yeah. To bind oneself by oath. To make a solemn declaration or affirmation by some sacred being or object as a deity. A solemn promise to vow. And what did our Messiah say in Matthew 5, 34? But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is Elohim's throne. So yeah, he convicted me not to vote. Okay, because knowing what we know, it doesn't matter which candidate makes it, both sides are owned, okay? And so we don't vote. And some people might object to that. But, you know, in biblical times, it was the prophet 
who selected the king. It was the prophet who went and poured the flask of olive oil on the head of the anointed king. There was no such thing as people voting. Okay. So scripture tells us we are supposed to choose um, from someone among our own brethren. It's in Deuteronomy 17. Uh, I think that's where it is. But you shall choose uh, a king from among your own, someone from among your own brethren. Well, all the presidents are Freemasons. They have to be. They have to take a secret blood oath. They have to be, uh, bind themselves to the to Lucifer. They have to bind themselves to Baphomet. They won't even get past first base. They won't even make it to the ballot unless they belong to the secret club. Okay. The club of Lucifer, the club of Rome. Okay. They, they won't even let you on the ballot unless you have already sold your soul to the devil. Okay. So every president has belonged to these secret societies. You know, the Bush family, they belong to the skull and bones. They're all Freemasons, every last one of them. Okay. All right. So 20 biblical proofs that Trump is the little horn and not Obama. Now I'm getting so tired of people thinking Obama's the antichrist. Obama's the little horn. So I decided to do this because so many people are deceived. And the night I was born again, I was born again on February the 10th, 1981. And on that night, I was praying. I was crying. I was sobbing. I was 20 years old. I said, Father, what have you called me to do? Why am I here? Why did you create me? You know, I wanted to understand what my purpose was for even existing. And he spoke to me and said, I've called you to warn my people about the soon coming Antichrist. And I was stunned by that because I knew very little about Bible prophecy at that time in my life. I knew very little. And I was like, I don't understand. You know, why would you call me to do that? But for the last, you know, 40 something years, close to 50 years, I've been studying the end time prophecies of the Bible because I wanted to be ready when the time came. I wanted to be ready to step into the calling that he's placed on my life. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to warn people because he said, unless you warn them, if you don't warn them, their blood is on your hands. That's in Ezekiel chapter three. So if I don't warn people, their, the, their blood is on my hands. So I have no choice. I have to do this. Okay. So the number one proof that I use is Barack Obama is too obviously opposed to Christians and Jews and has not fooled many Bible believers. So our Messiah warned us that there would be many false messiahs and false prophets in these last days and that the deception would be so powerful that they will even deceive the elect. Now, it is important to understand that the Greek word for possible in Matthew 24, 24 is this word 1415 dunatos, which means powerful or capable. So when we read Matthew 24, 24, a lot of people see the word possible and they think it's a rhetorical question like, gee, is it even possible for the elect to be deceived? They think it means it's not possible because the word possible raises this question like, gee, is it even possible? Right? So also the words it were are italicized. So it were possible. It were is not even there. It's italicized. Anytime you see words italicized in the King James version, it means the English translators added those words. So Matthew 24, 24 says, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if powerful, if powerful, they shall deceive the very elect. So it's not a rhetorical question. It's not saying, gee, is it even possible? It's saying it's going to be a powerful deception. And this goes right along with the warning from the apostle Shaul or Paul 
who calls it a strong delusion. Second Thessalonians 2.11, And for this cause Elohim shall send them strong delusion, that they shall believe a lie, that they should believe a lie. Okay, so this is the number one reason why Barack Obama cannot be the false messiah, the man of sin, the son of perdition, a.k.a. Antichrist. Now, is he an Antichrist? Absolutely. He definitely, definitely operates in the spirit of an Antichrist. But he's, I don't believe he's the final one that's going to sit in the temple and declare himself to be Elohim. And I'll explain to you why in this blog. It is possible because, oh, it, no, it is, I'm sorry, I'm getting my words tongue tied here. It is because he has not fooled many Christians or Jews into believing that he is one of them or that he is on their side. Barack Obama has been openly in favor of same sex marriages and abortion. He also made disparaging remarks against the Bible. This is what he said when he was in office. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with Leviticus, which suggests slavery is okay and that eating shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go with Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? So before we get carried away, let's read our Bible now, Obama said to cheers. Folks haven't been reading their Bible. He also called Jesus' Sermon on the Mount a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our Defense Department would survive its application. Okay, so I gave the link here. Obama mocks and attacks Jesus Christ in the Bible. Totally obvious. If the devil wanted to disguise himself and deceive the very elect, do you think he would show up with a red suit and a pitchfork and say, hey, I'm the devil? Do you think he would do that? No. <laughs> Scripture tells us that Satan transforms himself as an angel of light. Well, anyone can look at Obama and say, no way is this guy disguising himself as an angel of light. Okay, everything but that, right? As a matter of fact, all of us can remember when the television series called The Bible showed the devil looking eerily similar to Barack Obama. Interestingly, this show aired on March 13th, 2013. There you have two number 13s signaling that the Illuminati were doing this on purpose. I believe they deliberately chose a guy that looked like Obama. I believe they've been trying to convince us that Obama is the quote unquote antichrist so that when Trump came onto the scene, Christians and conservatives would have already made up their minds that Obama is the one. Even Glenn Beck, who's a Mormon and a Freemason, showed this image on his television show and he tweeted about it on Twitter. OK, so when Luciferians expose Satanists, what you must understand is that it's the false light exposing the obvious darkness in an effort to throw you off their scent. Even though scripture makes it clear that Lucifer and Satan are the same being, Freemasons believe that Jesus is a reincarnation of the fallen angel Lucifer. So Freemasons call themselves Christians. They believe that they are Christian, even though their identity of, is an, of quote unquote Jesus is Lucifer. So they worship another Jesus, as Paul talked about in the uh scriptures he says that that if any man comes preaching another messiah another yahushua whom we have not preached let him be accursed or if any man preaches another gospel other than what we he's when he says we he's talking about we jewish apostles right you the yahudim the jewish apostles if any man preaches any other gospel or any other messiah other than what we have preached let him be cursed Okay, so Luciferians believe that they are Christians. 
just because they say, well, we believe in Jesus. Yes, you do believe in Jesus, but what do you believe about Jesus? You believe he's a reincarnation of Lucifer. So Luciferians do not categorize themselves as Satanists. They are deceived. They believe the Satanists are the bad guys and they're the good guys because they believe that, you know, the word Lucifer in Latin means light bearer. So they believe they are of the light, but they are of the false light. Okay. So Luciferians are always trying to expose Satanists as if we're the good guys and they're the bad guys. But see, they're both bad. So let me show you. This is a graphic I made. <clears throat> the false light claims to be conservative and Christian, but serves the devil. The obvious dark admits that they are liberals and that they also serve the devil. So you've got the black witch. She's obvious. She's wearing black. She's got green skin. She looks evil and demonic. But you got the white witch who looks it's so easy to hate her, huh? Yeah. They make it so easy and convenient. Exactly. But you got the white witch who smiles and looks pretty and she's all glittery and glamorous. But you see the black witch and the white witch both worship the same devil. Okay. And you got the yin and the yang, the black and the white. They're together in the same circle because that's what it's all about. Being part of the Luciferian doctrine as that you believe that God is both good and evil. That's what they believe. God is both Satan and he's both Jesus at the same time. That's what Luciferians believe. The dark side is too obvious to deceive the elect, but the false light is able to de deceive the elect by strong delusion. Okay, so, uh, therefore, they falsely categorize themselves as Christians while referring to those on the left as Satanists. Until you understand this concept, you will continue to fall for the left-right paradigm. Okay, the left-right paradigm. I've got two blogs here. Is Lucifer the morning star? And also, what is the Hegelian dialectic? Okay, we'll go more into that in a little bit. Now, Trump, on the other hand, pretends to uphold the Bible, while Obama has also been openly against Israel, and he's in favor of their worst enemy, which is Iran. Okay, you got Trump holding up the Bible. This Newsweek article, did the U.S. under Obama give Iran $150 billion? Okay, well, as a matter of fact, before leaving office in 2016, President Obama donated billions of our American tax dollars to Iran. Do you honestly think that the Jewish people in Israel would now ask Barack Obama to build the third Jewish temple? What do you think? No. <laughs> Conversely, President Donald Trump has been quoted as saying, nobody is against anti-Semitism more than me. He also made a speech at the Bilderberg dinner in 2016 that he is committed to fighting against persecution of Christians, Roman Catholics, and Jews. Okay, so see all these articles that I've posted here for you. Trump's order to combat anti-Semitism divides its audience, American Jews. Trump's promises to protect Christians from persecution, Trump and the Christian persecution complex. Okay. Why would Trump make such declarations? Because it is obvious to those of us who understand the agenda behind the ecumenical movement that all major religions of the world must be brought together under the authority of the Vatican. Donald Trump is a graduate of Fordham University, which is a Jesuit Bible college. Therefore, he knows his place on the political world stage, and he is following his marching orders. Okay, um, Trump takes the same stand against abortion, supposedly, as President Ronald Reagan did. Both Reagan and Trump took enough of a stand against abortion to make it look good to their right Christian right wing conservative supporters, but not enough of a stand to do anything about it. In other words, talk is cheap. 
You can say, yeah, I'm against abortion, but then you can do nothing about it. And that suffices. That that keeps people placated, right? The Washington Post published an article quoting Trump. He says, as most people know, and as far and as for those who like to know, I am strongly pro-life with three exceptions, rape, incest, and protecting the life of the mother. The same position taken by Ronald Reagan, Trump said, as he appeared to distance himself from Alabama's restrictive abortion law. Okay, so Trump says he's an anti-abortion champion like Reagan. History says not quite. Well, just like Reagan, Trump favors killing a baby in the womb in cases of incest and rape. This is not a pro-life stance at all. Medical professionals can conjure up a medical reason for aborting a baby when they want to. So there is no medical reason that will stand in the courts of heaven for murdering an unborn baby. Okay, so it's all smoke and mirrors. They act like they're against abortion. They make it look good so all the Christians are clamoring to vote for this person, but they never do anything about it. It just keeps the people placated, okay? Here we got Ronald Reagan pointing pointing to a television screen with a baby in the womb, you know, from a sonogram. And he says, I've noticed that everyone who is for abortion is already born. Okay, that was powerful. All the Christians loved that. I did too. I remember thinking, wow, he's a real born again Christian. Yeah, until I learned that he and Pope John Paul became really good friends. And they both were um, saying that, you know, Pope John Paul had an attempted assassination on his life. And then also Ronald Reagan had an attempted assassination on his life. And within a few months, I learned later from reading about the Alberto story, Alberto Rivera, who used to be a Jesuit, said that was all staged and planned by the Vatican. They planned it that way, that Pope John Paul would have a fake assassination attempt on his life, and that Ronald Reagan would have a fake assassination attempt on his life. And the two of them went on radio interviews together and television interviews together. And Ronald Reagan and Pope John Paul both gave the credit to Mother Mary for saving their lives. No mention of Messiah. No mention that, you know, Jesus Christ stopped the bullet. No, they both said it was Mother Mary who saved us from the bullet or saved us from being killed. Okay, so the whole thing was a ruse. There was no real assassination attempt on Reagan. There was no real assassination attempt on uh, Pope John Paul II. It was all part of a scheme to get the ecumenical movement in full swing so that, you know, Reagan, who professed to be Protestant, became good friends with Pope John Paul II, who was Catholic. And it was meant to make Protestants go, well, look at Reagan. He's Protestant, but he's friends with the Pope. And guess what? Reagan is against abortion. So, you know what? Maybe we should do what Reagan did. Maybe we should start, you know accepting Roman Catholicism too. Like it's all part of the, you know, smoke and mirrors that they're trying to make people in the Protestant world be more and more accepting of Roman Catholicism. That's what this was all about. Okay. Okay. Trump made it appear that he was defunding Planned Parenthood back in 2019. But what did he do? He redirected those same funds for this development. I'm going to say the word snake bite for snake bite development. Okay. When he gave 1.16 billion in our U S tax dollars to this organization. Okay. And this is the name of the organization. G A V I. I'm going to spell it out, which was started by Bill Gates and the who. Okay. You know what who stands for? W H O. Thus, we can see that Trump is notorious for pulling the famous bait and switch tactic that many Christians and conservatives are falling for. Now, if you want documentation for all this, I have it in my blog called Is President Trump a Globalist? 
Now, there is no question that Barack Obama is an antichrist and one who operates in that spirit. However, since our Messiah told us in Matthew 24, 24, that there will be many false Christs and false prophets, therefore we can safely say that Barack Obama is one of many antichrists. But he's not the one spoken of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 says, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he as Elohim sits in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. So the only politician on the world stage right now who fits that description is Donald Trump, who has on many occasions referred to himself as the chosen one, the second coming of God, the Messiah, the King of Israel. Okay. In Daniel 7, 8, and also in Revelation 13, 5, one of the biggest characteristics of the little horn or the beast is that he speaks great things and blasphemies against the Most High. Okay, so see my other blog, he shall exalt and magnify himself. Number two, the name Trump in Hebrew, Karen, means a horn, as in little horn, or a trumpet, a coronet. Okay, Daniel 7, 8, and 8, 9. Okay, here is what a, uh, the word Karen for little horn means a horn, a coronet. A coronet is a little trumpet, a little trump. Okay, um, <clears throat> the word little in Hebrew, Zaire, means to be brought low, to be made small. You see, Trump has been deliberately made to go through humiliation rituals like, you know, all the indictments, you know, uh, all the impeachment attempts. It's all been made to manipulate the minds of the public so that people feel sorry for him and they feel like he's the underdog and we need to fight for him. And he's just like our Messiah. You know, he's even made statements like nobody has been more persecuted than me. You know, nobody in history has been, I'm the most persecuted man in history. He's made those kind of statements. So the word little the Hebrew meaning of little is right here, Zaire. It means to dwindle. Okay, well, you see, when Trump supposedly lost the 2020 election, um, it was meant to make it look like, you know, his popularity was dwindling. It, he was made to look small. He was made to look like the poor, persecuted, you know, martyr. But... Look what that's done. It's actually had the opposite effect. People fight for him all the more because they feel so sorry for him. That poor man. Oh, my goodness. Look what the left is doing to that poor man. Oh, my goodness. That poor guy. They have put him through the ringer. Yeah, it's all by design. It's all on purpose. Okay. Conversely, some have tried to make the argument that the name Barack Obama was named by our Messiah in Luke 8, 10, 18, when he said the following. He said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So we've all heard this, right? They rationalize that in Hebrew, the word for lightning is Barak. But the only difference is that the word Barak ends with the letter Q. It's spelled with the Hebrew letter Kuf which is equivalent to the English letter Q. Okay. Okay. So there are two different words in Hebrew that sound the same, but one of them ends with a kuf or a Q and the other one ends with a kaf or a K. Obviously Barack Obama spells his name with a kaf, a K on the end, which in Semitic means to bless God. That's what it means. 
Therefore, the argument that Barack Obama was named by our Messiah is now disproven. Here we see the word Barack with ends with a Q. Lightning, okay? Uh, Barack, okay? Lightning, a flashing sword, bright, glittering. Now Barack ending with a K means to kneel, to bless God, to praise, okay? Now I'm not saying he's blessed, that's just the name he chose for himself, right? Now, if our Messiah was calling the lightning that fell from heaven Barack, he would have used, I mean, um, Obama's name should end with a Q. But it doesn't. It ends with a K. Okay, so it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the prophecy. Okay. <clears throat> the name President Donald Trump in computer ASCII code has a numerical value of 666 which is the same numeric, numerical value as this word that starts with a V, okay? So let's look at this, okay? <clears throat> the following website uses 10 different methods of gematria for counting the name and number of the beast to include computer ASCII code, okay? You can go there, antichristcalculator.com. You can do the, the calculations yourself. President Donald Trump, 666. The V word, 666. Mark of Beast, Trump name Beast, 666, Trump number Beast, 666, Trump is Antichrist, 666, Trump is Satan, Trump is Devil, Trump is Serpent, Trump is Nimrod, Trump is Assyrian, Trump is Clone, Trump is Tyrant, Trump from Hell, Trump is Pharaoh, Trump is Unicorn, Trump is arrogant. Trump is prideful. Trump lawless one. Trump prince of Grisha. Trump is Poseidon. Trump is Tyrus. You know, the king of Tyre in Ezekiel uh, uh, 28. Okay, Trump is Roman. Trump is Haman. You know, Haman, the evil guy in Persia uh, that tried to have all the Jews in Persia annihilated. Trump Third Temple, Trump is Pope, Trump is Halal, Halal is the Hebrew name for Lucifer, Trump is Tammuz, Trump is He Goat, you know, the He Goat and Daniel's prophecy <clears throat> that attacks the ram, okay? Trump is Nero, Trump is Judas, Trump is Terminator, Trump is Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, I've even found more than that, but these are just the most key words that I found that are just, I've not been able to do this with any other person's name. Okay. I've tried other people's names. No, I bet if you threw some <laughs> extras in there, like Trump is tuna fish, Trump is banana, right? <laughs> I bet you those don't work. I don't know. I'll have to try but this. The, the point being is that they don't make any sense. They don't have any meaning. All those things have some sort of significance. Yeah. And then none of them are positive. Right. So this means that the name, number, and mark of the beast matches the numerical value of the name President Donald Trump. Okay. Now, Revelation 13, 17 says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six. See these calculations at this website. Conversely, the name of President Barack Hussein Obama does not have the value of 666. I have tried calculating his name several different ways, even his birth name, Barry Sotoro, but there's no match for 666. The biometric tracking, tracking system is in the future. Um, it's the future mark of the beast. Now, I do believe the snake bite, the, the word that begins with a V, that's also part of it. But um, I'm going to explain. There's three aspects to the mark of the beast. So stay with me. President Donald Trump has told us many times in his speeches that he intends in the future to roll out the biometric track, tracking system, which means that we will not be able to travel, uh, buy, or sell without this ID. Now, at this uh, 2 minute and 57 mark of this video, you'll hear Trump saying it. 
I was going to play it, but I forgot to tell Gary earlier. Um, did you? We could play it later during the Q and A. Okay, when we stop recording. Okay. Um, those who want to hear it, or if you want to hear it, you can go to my blog and click on the link, and it'll take you there. But this is what he says in the video. He says we will finally complete the biometric entry exit tracking system, which we need desperately. In my administration, we will ensure that this system is in place. And I will tell you, it will be on land. It will be on sea. It will be in air. It, we will have a proper tracking system. We will turn off the jobs and the benefits. And then he says this word magnet, which I'm not quite sure what he means by that. But he says, we will turn off the jobs and benefits magnet. Because people who come here illegally, oh. uh, they sort of register, if you will, and they're given money for phones, for bills, for apartments. You know, we support them. Right. It's like it's like uh, illegal migrant welfare. Right. So he's basically telling us everyone's going to have to have this ID. What most people have not figured out yet is that the Luciferian global elites have orchestrated this child trafficking crisis. They have orchestrated the illegal immigration crisis. They have orchestrated the voter fraud crisis, all for one end goal, which is to roll out this biometric tracking ID, which is the biblical mark of the beast. Okay, so uh, this is what... You see uh, biometric authentication methods for attendance tracking. And you see people scanning their fingerprint, okay, uh, hand, uh, eye scans. You know, biometric means they can scan something. They measure something on your body, okay. So by following the creation account Genesis, we can easily see that the mark of the beast has three components. Number one, a physical body. In other words, altering the human DNA into the image of the beast via the iron and the clay. Graphene oxide, which is transhumanism. We read about that in Daniel 2.42 through 44. All the Terminator movies were telling us what they're planning. Okay, mixing machines with humans. This is Satan's attempt to recreate humans in his image. This is a reversal of Genesis 1, 26 through 27, where Yahuwah says he created man in his own image. Well, now Satan wants to recreate humans in his image. Okay, B, spiritual, outlawing the seventh-day Sabbath for believers in Messiah and requiring Sunday Sabbath keeping. Okay, so the number seven in Hebrew is Shabbat, which means to take an oath by swearing seven times. Yahuwah marks his own people by giving us a day of rest, which is, covenant, which is his covenant with us. This is Satan's attempt to recreate the Sabbath for himself, a reversal of Genesis 2, 2 through 3. C, mind, financial, biometric tracking, cannot buy or sell without it. Okay, this is Satan's attempt to mark his own children, a reversal of Genesis 4.15, where Yahuwah gave Cain the mark of the Aleph and the Ta. Yeah, when it says that he gave Cain a mark, the word there in Hebrew is the Aleph Ta. It's a covenant mark. It's not a bad mark. He gave a mark of protection to Cain. Even though Cain, what Cain did was evil, he still protected him because of course, Yahuwah is always about redemption. And he was, you know, trying to give Cain an opportunity to repent. Okay. Satan's mark is 666 because humanity was created on day number six. And a trinity of sixes means that Satan is trying to mimic our creator who resurrected on the third day. To learn more, uh, see my other blog called Mark of the Beast Decoded in Gen Genesis. And then I have some other links here. Trump will, will roll out my, microchipping. Trump says ID needed to buy groceries in the future. Uh, will Trump's biometric entry exit system be as controversial as his travel ban? Um, 
Trump order calls for DHS to accelerate biometric entry exit biometric checkpoints in Trump's America. Trump, we will reform immigration to best serve America. Don Lemon tonight. Okay, so these are all links you could look up. Okay, number five, the beast comes in his own name. John 543 and Trump owns 318 copyrights on items sold around the world with his name on them. The Trump name is branded and appears on everything from statues to T-shirts to hotels, mattresses, liquor, gambling casinos, wine, etc. The Donald or Donald Trump has been listed as owner for 318 trademarks using the Trump name in the United States database. What most people may, may not be aware of is that the name Donald in Gaelic or Scottish literally means the world ruler. Conversely, all the other runner ups for this position of Antichrist, who many people have speculated about, do not come in their own birth name. Barack Hussein Obama changed his name from his original birth name, which is Barry Sotoro. Pope Francis does not come in his own name when he holds the office of a pope because his birth name is George Mario Bergoglio. King Charles III is also not his original birth name either, for he was born Prince Charles Philip Arthur George of Wales. However, his current legal name is King Charles III of the United Kingdom, or simply Charles III. So none of these guys' names add up to 666. But Trump, who comes in his own name, President Donald Trump, does add up to 666. Okay, in fact, I made this graphic so you can see. Matthew 23, 9, our Messiah says, Call no man your father, upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven so trump is selling t-shirts and he's got the copyright on these he's not selling these t-shirts and making zero money off of it are you kidding me he's trademarked the trump name that means anything that somebody sells with his name on it he gets paid okay nobody can sell anything with his name on it legally without him getting paid for it Okay, so you got T-shirts that say, Daddy, um, I love Daddy Trump. Trump is my daddy. Best dad ever. Pfft, ridiculous. Crazy. Okay. And you know what? When they say this, they're actually giving out a cryptic message because all those who took the snake bite, his snake bite, they've been infected with his DNA. So technically, he is their daddy. <laughs> I mean, think about that, okay? Um, okay, so in my other blogs, I show all the trademarks that have been listed using the Trump name in the United States. In addition to 318 trademarks with the Trump name in them, I have found 33 terms with the name Trump in it, adding up to 666 in computer ASCII code, which I already showed you. Okay, so here's more blogs I have the number of the beast revealed in computer ASCII code and the one who comes in his own name. Okay. And um, number six, Trump's genealogy or lineage traces back to the Assyrians. Now, Isaiah prophesied about this world dictator in the end of days who he calls the Assyrian. Well, Trump's family also claimed to be Merovingian Jews, supposedly the offspring of Mary Magdalene and Jesus. They claim Mary Magdalene and Jesus got married and had a baby together. Okay, And that's not true. It's not supported by scripture, but this is what they believe. So I explain all of that in this blog, who is the Assyrian in Isaiah's prophecy and Trump's Merovingian royal bloodline. Okay, number seven. Trump spearheaded Operation Warp Speed in 2020, which has caused 6.66 billion souls to take the mark, the mark of the beast. In uh, Revelation 13, 18, we see a prophecy that Trump has already begun to fulfill, and he will continue to fulfill it during his 42 months of false ministry. 
So here's another blog I have, Ezekiel and the Parable of the Woman in Matthew 13, 33. Now this comes from Bloomberg, and look at what it says. More than 6.66 billion, you know, they were given, you know what, okay, tracker, okay? And this comes from August 16th, 2021. Now, I think that's a little interesting that that's the number of people, okay? So, the mark of the beast removes from the human DNA, the genome, the name of the father, which is four Hebrew letters, yod Hey wah and it replaces it with a triple helix strand of DNA containing a sequence of number 666, okay? Trump also called the V, or the snake bites, a great Christmas miracle. Revelation 13, 14 through 18, also 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Okay, and you have all the links here uh, where I show the evidence for this. Okay, this is a news article from December 24th, 2020. Trump calls this right here a Christmas miracle. Okay. And also take a look at these two blogs is the beast that is Mark here already. President Trump's poem about the snake and the woman. Also, here's another one, the image name and number of the beast. And here's another graphic I made. Will the woman, America, nurture the almost dead snake and bring him back to life? How many more will be bitten by his deadly bite? And when he read this poem, and he still reads it sometimes at his rallies, he reads it out loud and he says, Shut up, silly woman. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Okay. And we see right here, it says, A new study published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation has identified a snake venom-related mm -hmm. enzyme that may be the key cause of related mortality. So he's speaking in code, speaking in cryptic language, like the QAnon people would like to say. Number eight, Trump placed an abomination that causes desolation inside the human body or temple by using 1.16 billion of our American tax dollars to develop a substance that mixes iron and clay. Daniel 2.43. This has caused the alteration of human DNA with unclean animals and human cells from live abortions. Okay, and here's my graphic that I made on March 21st, 2020. You can see the heading, what it says. Okay, uh, V are an abomination to the human temple. Here you see the first abomination of desolation, Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth in 167 B.C., offered up an image or offered up swine's flesh to an image of Zeus, okay? And uh, his image was on the temple coin. The second time it happened, again in 70 AD, an image of Jupiter and Caesar were both erected in the holy place. Also, unclean swine again killed on the altar, uh, Nero Caesar's image on the coin. And now you have the third abomination of desolation. Okay. Operation Warp Speed. President Trump on December 21st, 2020, called it a great Christmas miracle. And here are all the ingredients. Abominable ingredients. Okay. Leviticus 11, 4 through 47 says, These shall you not eat. And they, and they name, you know, the word of Yahuwah names the things we're not supposed to eat. Rabbit, mouse, pig, horse, shellfish, dog, human cadaver, carcasses of dead humans and animals, the blood of either clean or unclean creatures, human blood. And then he goes on to say, you shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creeps. Neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them that you should be defiled thereby. For I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And interestingly, the name Epiphanes in Greek means God manifest and has a numerical value of 666. Nero Caesar in Roman numerals is 666. President Donald Trump in computer ASCII code, 666. This word right here, 
and computer ASCII code has the same value, 666. Okay, and then we have his image on the coin, just like the previous antichrists of history. They all have their image on the temple coin. Okay, so you see in the pattern yet? So graphene oxide is a substance that is made using, I, uh, using iron and humans are made from the dust of the earth, which is formed into clay. Okay, and I give all the citations here. Number nine. The little horn is given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies against the most high. Now, Trump bragged on social media, um, calling himself the second coming of God, the Messiah, the King of Israel and the chosen one. Now, he was repeating what some other guy said about him, Wayne Allen Root. But look, if he really uh, had any humility, he would disagree with Wayne Allen Root and say, no, 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 I'm not the second coming of God. No, I'm not the chosen one. But no, what he does is he revels in this and he's bragging on it. He says, thank you to Wayne Allen Root for the very nice words. President Trump is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world, not just America. He's the best president for Israel in the history of the world. And the Jewish people in Israel love him like he's the king of Israel. They love him like he's the second coming of God. But American Jews don't know him or like him. They don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. It makes no sense. But that's okay. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's good for, you know, the country is what Wayne Allen Root said. But Trump repeated the words of Wayne Allen Root on Twitter. Okay. He's bragging on himself. So he's speaking great things and blasphemies. All right. And then this blog, 14 Identifiers of the Little Horn. I recommend that. Number 10, the little horn subdues three kings or nations. That's Daniel 7, 24. And as you can see, I've got a graphic here I made. The little horn destroys many by a peace agreement. Daniel 8, 25. You can see all the things that are on this sword. You can see uh, Space Force satellites. You can see a dove with an olive branch in its beak. That represents peace. You can see the planet Saturn. Um, you can see the <clears throat> these things right here. Syringes, uh, you know, satellite dishes, heart monitors, uh, computer ASCII code. All of this is on the back of this coin. His name is on there. Okay. Um, and it quotes something out of the Quran. And if one inclines toward peace, it inclines toward you. All right. And so um, it says Israeli and Emirati companies signed agreements to work together for a cure for, you know, CV-19, as well as cooperation in the fields of infrastructure, science, agriculture, and energy. The signature of Donald J. Trump the president has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. All right, so here he is. They signed an agreement, three kings, okay, three nations, three horns. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Bahrain um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdul Latif bin Rashid El Zayani, um, also... Uh, Let's see. United Arab Emirates Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Zaid bin Sultan Al Nahyan participate in the signing ceremony of the Abraham Accords at the White House in Washington, D.C. Okay, I didn't mean to go there. I meant to uh, <clears throat> go here. Okay. So, yeah, he subdued three kings. All right, just like scrap scripture says. The little horn destroys many by a peace agreement and subdues three nations or three kings. Now, if you read the Abraham Accords, which I did, there's a clause in there that states that these countries have to all 
cooperate with the distribution and development of the snake bites. So that's why I say he destroys many by peace. Okay, now Trump brokered a peace deal with three nations, Israel, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates on August 13th, 2020, thus subduing three kings, which fulfilled several prophecies at once. <clears throat> Number 11, the little horn destroys many by peace. Daniel 8, 25, uh, Isaiah 28, 15 through 18, Trump's Abraham Accords includes a, includes a clause stipulating that the nations that sign the agreement must participate with the development and distribution of, you know, what, okay, which destroys the human body over time. Thus, Daniel 8.25 says he shall destroy many by peace, Isaiah 28.15 through 18, and he calls this a covenant with death in Isaiah's prophecy. He calls this a covenant with death. Um, number 12, a wall on Mount Hermon was dedicated to uh, Donald Trump by Benjamin Netanyahu called Trump Heights. Now, somebody wrote to me <clears throat> just um, yesterday and objected to this and said, he said, well, I looked it up and he said, Mount Hermon is 37 miles away from Trump Heights. Okay, so I'm going to go to the, I'm going to show you this so that you understand. I meant to include this in the blog, <clears throat> but I kind of um, got busy and completely forgot. But um, just so you know, those who are saying, uh, you know, I'm making stuff up. Okay, so this article um, on Wikipedia says that, um, let's see, that Trump Heights uh, is a planned Israeli settlement in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, named after and in honor of Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States. Okay, and then it says the Golan Heights rise from 400 to 1,700 feet in the northeastern section of the country. Israel's highest mountain, Mount Hermon, is located there. Okay, this comes from this article. Okay, um, Jewish Virtual Library. It's telling us that the Golan Heights is in the same location where Mount Hermon is at. Now, it covers a large area, so... <clears throat> The guy who objected and said that the Golan Heights is 37 miles away from Mount Hermon, or he, I think what he's saying is that the Trump Heights, you know, the sign that I just showed, the sign was dedicated to Trump. Okay. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu dedicated this sign to Trump. Okay. So a wall on Mount Hermon was dedicated to Donald Trump by Benjamin Netanyahu called Trump Heights. So it's a large area. It's not, it's the Golan Heights. I might have to reword this to make it more clear. This what this is in the Golan Heights, which is in the Golan Heights area is where Mount Hermon is at. Same area, but just because it's, there's a, 37 mile radius some people are objecting and saying thinking that i'm you know not quoting facts it's just that it's a large it's a large radius of area right so in isaiah 4 14 4 the fallen angel named halel which is lucifer said i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high so as you can see they named this area Trump Heights. Number 13, Trump magnifies himself in his heart and by his words, he magnifies himself above all other pagan gods, including the real Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim. He magnifies himself above all other deities. And it says that in Daniel 
8.25, also Daniel 11.36 through 37. Number 14, Trump honors the God of fortresses in his Trump Tower estate with a mural on the ceiling of Apollo. Apollo is the son of Zeus. And other statues and paintings of pagan deities, Trump has these in his Trump estate. Okay, and it says this in Daniel 11:38. So here is uh, a graphic I made: Freemason Temple with Apollo on the ceiling. They show in this Freemasonic uh, book um, these guys gathered together. They're all Freemasons. They're in the, a Freemasonic temple, and you see these columns, and on the ceiling is Apollo. Now you've got Trump's tower you know, his penthouse in New York, and it's designed the same way as a Freemasonic temple. It's got the mural of Apollo on the sea, uh, on the ceiling riding a chariot, and he's got all the columns, all the columns, just like you would see in a Freemasonic temple, the same design. Now, what's interesting is that in Daniel, Daniel 11, 36 through 37, it says he shall Honor the God of forces with gold and with silver and with precious things. Well, his whole New York penthouse, everything is just covered in gold. Okay. And also in Hebrew, the name Apollo is a bad dawn, a bad dawn. I think that is no coincidence. I think that's a better proof than Barack Hussein Obama or Barack meaning lightning but see, he doesn't spell it like that. He doesn't spell it with a Q. He spells his last name with a K. So it doesn't even mean lightning. Okay. But I think this is way much, you know, way better proof. Okay. That a bad dawn is named in scripture. Number 15th. The little horn magnifies himself above all other gods, including the pagan deity named Tammuz, who was also nicknamed the desire of women. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of saying, oh, the Antichrist is going to be a homosexual. And the reason they think that is because of what it says in Daniel 1137. Let's go there real quick. Daniel 1137 um, find it here. It says, neither shall he regard the Elohim of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify him himself above, above all others. Okay. So people see the desire of women, they think that means he's a homosexual. That's not what it means. Okay. I did some research into this. And basically, here's what I've got this other blog called Four Common Myths About Antichrist Debunked. Number two, the anti Messiah is a homosexual. Okay. The Hebrew rendering of Daniel 11 37 says that the little horn shall not regard Kemda Nashim. This is translated to the desire of women. This phrase refers to someone who is dear to women, the object of their affection. J.A. Montgomery, in his critical and exegetical commentary on the book of Daniel, points out that Ewald identifies the desire of women as a Hebraic reference to the cult of Tammuz, or in Greek, Adonis. This cult was evidently popular in Syria and was quite ancient and therefore not requiring a very late date for Daniel. And perhaps more importantly, this cult had a particular appeal to women. Lawrence M. Willis or Wills in the Jewish study Bible annotation to his passage to this passage concurs that this is a reference to the Mesopotamian God named Tammuz in Ezekiel 8.14. Therefore, the little horn shall have no regard for any pagan deity, even the one who is called the desire of women or Tammuz, for he will exalt himself above all other gods or deities. So it's the same as like um, 
you know, Elvis Presley, for instance. In our modern culture, we saw women going crazy and screaming when Elvis Presley got on stage and was, you know, gyrating his hips. We saw the same thing happen with the Beatles. Women going crazy when the Beatles got up and started singing. So, in other words, it would be like if everybody called Elvis the desire of women. Yeah, he's the he's the heartthrob. He's the desire of women. So, it's the same type of thing. It's not saying that he's a homosexual. It's saying he shall not even regard this pagan god named Tammuz. He will have regard for no other deity. Because no he will lift his name above any other deity right. in history. So it's a misunderstanding that people have. Okay. See my blog, Four Common Myths About the Antichrist Debunked. Okay, number 16. The little horn shall think to change times and laws. Daniel 7, 24 through 25, which are the commandments of Yahuwah. Now, I, for years, I've always taken the Seventh-day Adventist um, belief on this verse because we know it's been famously known that it's been all the Roman popes and the Caesars who've changed times and laws. We know it was Pope Gregory in 1582 that changed the calendar date at midnight when the calendar date is supposed to change at sundown. He made it change at midnight. We know that it's the Catholic Church that famously changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Okay, we know that the Catholic Church has famously changed uh, the Passover to Easter. So when it says uh, that he shall change times and laws, you know, little horn shall think to change times and laws. I've always thought that's talking about the papacy or the Vatican. And I still believe it has that application. There's no question. Well, but Trump, see, is having a face to face encounter with a pope because Alberto Rivera revealed in his book that no president, no politician gets in a private audience with a pope unless they've already accepted the pope as the visible manifestation of Jesus Christ on earth. So every pope wears white while the president and his wife, you know, and all the visitors with them all wear black. That's supposed to symbolize that they are acting inferior to him. He's wearing white because he's supposed to symbolize Christ on earth, whereas the president and his wife are wearing black because they're acknowledging that they're inferior to him and they're showing homage, playing homage to him by, you know, wearing black. Okay. And this is where Trump had this face to face encounter with Pope Francis and he accepted the climate change encyclical, which is just another name for Depop. Okay. I'm speaking in code now, <laughs> trying to abbreviate what I said. Okay. What, what is written here? Um, then Trump tweeted, honor of a lifetime to meet his holiness, Pope Francis. I leave the Vatican more determined than ever to pursue peace in our world. Now, just yesterday, somebody sent me this and I, I you know, I meant to, to look this up and add it to my blog, but Trump supporters are now uh, suggesting that we change the word AD, which means Anos Dominos and BC to T, D and B, wait, B, T, like before Trump, after Trump. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find the article, but I don't see it at the moment, but somebody sent me this and basically Trump supporters are saying that when he comes into office, we should change the times. So in other words, you know, um, so let me try to give you an idea. So, uh, Anno Domini means the year of our Lord. Okay. BC, uh, before Christ, 
equals, um, you know, BC, or it, it can also mean before the common era. Right? But now, <laughs> Trump supporters are saying that when he comes into office, we should no longer be using AD, right? AD, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. But we should be, he, they're suggesting going like this. Um, before Trump, you know, BT, and after Trump, uh, AT. Instead of AD and BC, they're saying we should do, you know, BT and AT. So if that happens, that would definitely be a fulfillment of changing the times and laws. Changing times and laws. But I also think that Trump is going to... Um, He's going to definitely push the, the Sabbath, Sunday Sabbath laws. I believe he's going to push that. I believe he's also, he's already signed the Noahide laws. And the Noahide laws are in keeping with the Vatican's Sunday Sabbath law. Because the Noahide laws set, state that any Christian, that the Christians and Gentiles are not allowed to keep the Sabbath uh, that the Jews keep. That only the Jews qualify to keep the seventh day holy. So the Vatican and, you know, Judaism, they're going to probably, you know, make make this um, a law that's compatible with each other. You know, that Christians are going to be forced to keep Sunday holy and Jews are allowed to keep only the seventh day holy. But Christians and and Hebrew roots people will not be allowed to do that. So I can I definitely think Trump will enforce that. OK, Um. So on June 2nd, 2020, Trump signed an executive order called Advancing Interreligious Freedoms, which makes it illegal to, illegal to speak out against homosexuality and the one world religion of Antichrist Pope Francis. Now, he is an Antichrist. Definitely. Pope Francis is an Antichrist. But I don't believe he's the man of sin, the son of perdition. I don't believe he's the one that's going to sit in the temple and declare himself to be Elohim. I think that Pope Francis is the biblical false prophet. I used to think he was the eighth king or the little horn, but I no longer think that because the little horn, the more I study about the little horn, he is a military strategist. The little horn is someone who goes forth conquering and to conquer. He is somebody who knows how to broker peace deals. And all the characteristics of the little horn fit Trump to the tape. Now, if you go to this website, uh, Trump's executive order, President Trump's executive order on advancing interreligious freedom, you'll see U.S. Embassy to the Holy See, okay, the Vatican. So Trump signed this on June 2nd, 2020. And the very next day is when he and Melania stood before this giant statue of Pope John Paul II and prayed to it. The news articles I've read said that they actually prayed to this statue, prayed to Pope John Paul II. Okay. Uh, number 17, the man of sin promotes the mystery of lawlessness as he will build the temple of Yahuwah and he will sit in the temple declaring himself to be Elohim or G-O-D. President Trump has been asked by the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Sanhedrin, in 2016 to build the temple in Jerusalem. There is even a train station that will shuttle passengers from the Ben-Gurion Airport to the Temple Mount, and it is named the Donald Trump Train Station. Now, there, there's an article here, Sanhedrin asks Putin and Trump to build Third Temple in Jerusalem. Here's the graphic. The article is from November 10th, 2016 um, by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz. And you see Trump is on the coin, the temple coin. Okay. 
um, says the Sanhedrin has requested that President-elect Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin work together to help build the temple, rebuild the temple. So all this Russian-Ukraine war stuff, since the day it happened, I knew. The day that it happened, I said, oh, I know what this is about. This is all a distraction to lead up to this. That's what the whole Russian-Ukraine war is all about. It's all a huge distraction to bring everybody to their knees, the whole world to its knees, so that everybody will be so sick and tired of the fighting. They'll be so sick and tired of the war and the rumors of wars. They'll gladly let this temple get built without putting up a fight. That's what it's about. Okay, number 18. In October 2020, President Trump recovered from a deadly wound. And in Greek, the deadly wound, the word is plague, okay? Uh, which is, you know, you know what? The scamdemic. Afterwards, the Republicans made a golden image to him at the CPAC event in 2021. After he recovered from his deadly wound. And here's a Buddha statue that is made with Trump's face on it. They're selling these and, you know, they're making them in China and you can buy these online. Um, these are being sold all over the world. You can buy this statue on, uh, you know, Amazon. It's called King of Trump's. Exodus 20 verse 4 through 5 says, you shall not make unto you any graven image you shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them for i yahuwah your elohim am a jealous elohim okay um number 19 the beast shall suffer a deadly wound by a sword and shall live or recover the greek word for uh, for sword in revelation 13 14 is makira, which means judicial punishment. So here I made a graphic. In Revelation 13, 14, the beast is healed. In other words, he recovers from a deadly wound. The Greek word for wound means heavy affliction, plague, or public calamity. The word sword in Greek is makira, and it means judicial punishment. The beast will recover after being arrested and indicted. Okay. This was all scripted and planned. I mean, years before it even happened. I remember the day I found out that he was getting arrested. I knew the whole thing was just staged. I knew it was staged to make him look like the real Messiah. And finally, we're at number 20. The beast causes fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. Revelation 13, 13. And here we have Space Force. The hat for Space Force shows a spaceship taken off and it's got like two streams, jet streams coming from it. But if you turn it upside down, look at that. Looks just like Baphomet. It even has the star right in the same spot. Okay. Now that can't be possibly be a coincidence remember the star wars movie may the force be with you okay trump's space force hat upside down is baphomet may the tracking system be with you yeah each and every one that's right <laughs> yep and so when it says that he causes fires to come down from heaven in the sight of men I believe this is talking about the directed energy weapons that have caused all these unnatural fires throughout the United States at all these different food packaging plants. You know, the fires in Maui, the unnatural fires in California, all these food distribution centers. The Greek word for fire is poor, which means lightning, something that glows. In 2019, he, tr uh, Trump launched Space Force, which is 24-7 satellite surveillance, which tracks every human being on Earth that
that has already been microchipped via the snake bites. Okay, but they're not done. The reason why they had us wearing the face diapers, I'm going to call them face diapers, just, you know, to speak in code here. But the reason they had us doing that is because they are testing out the facial recognition system and they wanted us to stay six feet apart so that they could, uh, you know, do the facial recognition thing. Okay. Um, all these articles that I've shared here, they tell about how these fires, the, the firemen have noticed the signature of directed energy weapons because they're not natural fires. I'm just waiting for this to load here. By the way, in terms of the face diapers and the the um, six feet apart, that also gave them an opportunity to see who complies and who doesn't. Right, right exactly. They can start. They can start making a database of compliers and non-compliers. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. That's true. Mine too. Um, and here, this is a, a video, California firemen <clears throat> find signatures of directed energy weapons. Okay. He causes fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. Now, of course, that wasn't a news article. That's someone else's video on the matter. Sure. But, but there's you other the ones. video, you'll see some of the evidence. And yeah. there's, there's stuff coming out about Maui. Yeah. I'll, I'll go no more than say that. Yeah. So research um, maybe on some other platforms. <clears throat> You know, even even some of the popular uh, pages on YouTube, like Redacted, mm -hmm. that that news couple yeah. who are professional news people who have started their own company. Yeah. Um, they've got a number of interviews about what's actually been found in that whole thing. So Right. So the rays of the sun shining down on Trump. So this was on November 6, 2020, just three days after the presidential election, after he supposedly lost to Biden. Uh, this image was making the rounds on social media and it was like the rays of the sun shining down on Trump. Okay. And I can't seem to find the video anymore. It's like been taken down, but this was all over social media and Trump supporters were hailing him as some kind of Messiah figure with the manifestation of the sun rays shining down on him. And it says, no, no. Part of me wonders: Did they fake this effect with Project Bluebeam? Do you think that's possible? So, uh, Revelation thirteen thirteen says, "And he does great wonders that he makes fire come down from heaven in the sight of men." Well, the key operative phrase is "in the sight of men." So, this features many people witnessing this phenomenon. So, let's look at the word for fire in Revelation thirteen thirteen. It says. Number 4448, it's puro, which means to be ignited, to glow. Okay. Um, so it, it, can, it can also mean to burn or to be on fire, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be fire. It can mean something that glows. Okay. But the root word pour means fire. Um, the word horn in the little horn can also mean a ray of light. Okay. The word horn can also mean a ray of light. The Hebrew concordance also tells us that the word horn is a trumpet, a coronet. Okay. So, um, he causes, uh, you know, fire to come down in heaven from heaven in the sight of men, which I believe this is mostly talking about the, um, directed energy weapons, but it could also be talking about lying signs and wonders like this right here, where people are acting like because the rays of the sun came down on him, that was like some kind of sign from heaven that he's the chosen one. Okay. And then I talk about is Barack Obama, the lightning that falls from a high place in the sight of men. Now, some have suggested in different videos that revelation 13, 13 is about Barack Obama fall, falling from heaven as lightning. And as I've already shown you, the Hebrew word for lightning is number H one, three, zero, zero Barack spelled with three letters, bait Rosh Kuf. It ends with a Q. Um, there are two Hebrew words that sound the same, but they are not, but they are spelled differently. The word for blessed or to bless God 
is number H1288, and it is spelled almost the same except for the last letter, Kaf, K, instead of Kuf. So therefore, the word Barak, which is spelled Beit Rosh Kaf, doesn't match. It doesn't mean lightning. It's a different meaning entirely. Now, like I said, I'm not suggesting that Obama is blessed because we all know he's a very wicked man. However, Obama does not spell his name with a Q on the end. He spells it with a CK on the end. Therefore, it is a stretch to attach his name to this prophecy. In Luke 10, 18, our Messiah said that he beheld Satan fall as lightning. The word height or high place in Hebrew is Bama. Some have interpreted this to mean that Barak is the one who falls from the high place, Bama, and that the letter O, translated as the Hebrew letter Wal or Vav, is a connector meaning the. The only problem with this theory is that there have not been any people witnessing Barack Obama falling from the high place. Therefore, in the sight of men, cannot be referring to Obama falling as Satan. A more plausible argument is seen in the fact that there is a place in Israel that has been dedicated to Trump. And a friend of mine sent me this uh, photo of this um, a couple years ago and pointed out to me that this is Trump Heights, which is in on Mount Hermon, uh, Golan, 24-7 house prayer house of prayer now it's not directly like mount herman and the golan heights is a very large uh what do you call it radius it's like a it's like a mountain range yeah not necessarily the exact peak right exactly and Isaiah 14, 12 says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? And verse 13, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Elohim. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights. And that word heights is Bama. So that's where people are getting the idea that Obama means Satan falling from the heights. Okay. But he says, I will ascend above the heights, Bama, of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay. So Bama, that word number 1116 just means to be high in elevation, height, high place. Okay, so there's a few interesting things things about this place that are very telling. The first thing that comes to mind is when I see this photo and I in you know I see this uh, Trump Heights place. I think of this uh, these passages that I just read to you from Isaiah. Okay, um, and <clears throat> the Hebrew word for height, Bama. Also, the, um, the word Hermon, as in Mount Hermon in Hebrew, is this word H2763, Haram. Haram means to devote to religious uses, especially destruction, to be blunt as the nose, make accursed, to consecrate, to destroy, to slay. Okay, the root word is number 2764, harem, okay, which means physical as shutting in, uh, either literally or figuratively, usually a doomed object, extermination, a cursed thing, a dedicated thing, things would, which should have been utterly destroyed, utter destruction, devoted thing. So Mount Hermon is the place where Joshua, Yahushua, the son of Nun, conquered and defeated the giants or the Nephilim. And I think that's it, that's significant. Um, that's in chapter Joshua, chapter 12, 1 through 5. Now, like I said, I don't believe Obama is benign. I definitely believe he is an anti-Messiah. I definitely be believe he is a wicked man. Um, and then, of course, I explained already, will the little horn be uh, a homosexual? No, he that's not what it's saying. Now, 
I'm not saying that it's impossible for Trump to be one. Of course he could be. But like I showed you, um, I believe he's carrying, uh, you know, this mantle on him as the little horn. And the little horn um, says, it says that he shall not desire, he shall not regard any other pagan god, not even this pagan god that is called the desire of women. That would be Tammuz. Okay, and he shall magnify himself above all. And Daniel eleven thirty eight says, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. So here we have Trump, uh, you know, honoring the God Apollo, he's got the, he's got the statue or the mural of Apollo on the ceiling. I'm not the one who made this. I wouldn't spell the word mural with two R's. Somebody else did that. I'm going to try to find a way to use a different image because I don't want anyone thinking that I spelled, misspelled that. Uh, although I just did misspell the word pleasant here, but that was just a typo. I've got to fix that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Donald Trump does not regard the same Elohim as his ancestors because he regards the pagan deity named Apollo or Polyon in his Trump Tower estate with silver and with gold and with opulence. And here we have a Freemasonic temple with Apollo on the ceiling. And we've got how his penthouse is patterned after this Freemasonic temple. He's got Apollo on the ceiling. Same thing as the temple. He's got, you know, columns, uh, columns just like the Freemasonic temples. Um, so his entire penthouse is patterned after Freemasonic temples. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, he has a mural of Apollo on the ceiling. I already said that. Um, and so this Apollo is the same one that is spoken of in Isaiah, uh, Revelation 9-11. Revelation 9-11. I believe that they deliberately chose 9-11, okay, because they're trying to, um, let's see, 9-11. <laughs> they're trying to uh, show us that when they did that thing on 9-11, they were trying to... Uh, signal to us that Apollyon has come out of the bottomless pit, that this demonic spirit, I believe that something happened on that day in the realm of the spirit where this spirit of Apollyon has been unleashed into the world. Because before 9-11, we didn't see things, uh, our freedoms being taken away. All of a sudden, Homeland Security became a thing. People's freedoms were have been gradually taken away from them ever since 9-11. So um, that's why I believe they chose the date of 9-11 because of Apollyon, who is from Revelation 9-11. So, yeah, these are the biblical reasons why I don't believe Barack Hussein Obama is the man of sin, the son of perdition, the one that's going to sit in the temple and declare himself to be Elohim. Now, is he an evil guy? Yes. Is he an antichrist? Yes. Does that mean he's the little horn? No. No, he's not the little horn. That that title, I believe, belongs to Donald Trump. He's definitely fulfilling all the biblical criteria, all the biblical markers for the little horn. So anyway, we're ready to take questions from you guys when you're ready. Okay, so Jack is just saying he's got he's to take off. Um, thanks for joining us, Jack. Um, <clears throat> by the way, in Zoom, you guys can open your mic and ask questions if you like. If you're in YouTube, go ahead and type um, a question. How many people we have in YouTube? Or uh, I just put the link to Zoom if you want to jump from YouTube into Zoom. And if you've thought this was a, a good study, that it's beneficial to others, go ahead and like and subscribe. It, it, as everyone on YouTube says, it helps the algorithm, and it really does. Um, the more the more likes there are, the more they think, hey, maybe this would be good content for someone else because a lot of people have found this valuable, so it gets more 
it gets the word out. So it's not about us. We don't make anything off these. Right. Zero. <laughs> exactly. It's about uh, getting the word out. Any comments or questions? Anybody? Okay. Well, I know you're tired. I can tell. I can tell in your speech you're like just struggling to, to keep going. I know. Did I sound slurred? <laughs> uh, the last 15 minutes or so, yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> she's got heavy eyelids and she's trying to talk. She was up most of the night. Yeah, I was fixing. I was working on my blogs. Okay. Thanks for a couple more likes. That's great, guys. Uh, okay. Um, Valerie says she's been trying to tell her group about him, meaning uh, Trump. Brenda Hook says, thank you so much. And thanks for everyone who participated. Um, let's see. We got Monkey. We got SR. We have Perry. And and may Yahua uh, heal you, a brother. Um, heal your throat um, from that car accident. Yes. We're in agreement. We got uh, Rudy. We got, why does that keep doing that mic? Zoom is messing up there. Yeah, we got Rudy. Um, we had Matt Harding, um, Gloria. Oh, by the way, Gloria brought up a little interesting thing. Uh -huh. Gloria said that um, in the French translation of the Bible, it references God. It says it says the God desired by women. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a more clear interpretation interpretation of that piece of passage. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, you know, the desire of women, it just yeah. Again, it's an, it, it's easier to confuse. So yeah, I, that thank you for that. That's good. Yeah. And Gloria just said a really good teaching. Thanks. Uh, well, th thank you, Gloria, for joining us and mm -hmm. uh, for that that bit of insight. That was great. Brenda Hooks was here. Bobby Ricky said he just found us recently. So thanks for being with us. Um, and I did share the news station redacted. If you want to try to get some third party information, they're freelance. They're not Torah keepers. I don't even think they're Christians. They were asked, someone mentioned something about the Bible and they were clueless, you yeah. know? So it's like, okay, you guys don't know the Bible at all. <laughs> yeah. And they are still, I think, Trump supporters, but I mean, they, they do know a little bit, but they're, but they're still a little bit duped about the Hegelian dialectic. I agree. They're not drinking the Trump Kool-Aid, but they're not altogether, part, yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not into the whole, you know, one world government sort of ruling and everything type thing. Yeah, I mean they I think they're they're on to a lot of deception, but they they haven't they haven't figured all of it out yet. Hey Angela Lynn. Um she says she caught the end, but we'll watch the beginning this week. Thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Um or letting us be a part of your show. Yeah. <laughs> I should say. Um cool. Matt says thanks. Made sure to apply. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, um, we'll end at that and have a good Shabbat, and we will talk to you all next week. Shabu Atob. Yes, Shabu Atob.